what advice do you have for a woman seeking to start spiritual growth? So, um, the interesting question, the interesting part of that question is to start spiritual growth. Because um, the starting point that most people think is the starting point really isn't. So you, you have the phase where you go through where you look at your life and you're like, this is not okay. I don't like what I see. I don't like who I am. I don't like how I am in the world. And I got to find something else. There has to be more to life than this. It's usually the underlying thing there, right? And at that point, people begin to search, right? And most people think of that as the starting point of their spiritual growth. And it isn't. It's the starting point of becoming conscious. Okay? And so consciousness is saying, I have a choice about how I feel. And I have a choice about how I create my life. Spiritual growth is actually the process of changing yourself. And that doesn't normally come for another two stages after the stage that you just, that we just talked about. You know, you, you, the, the, the stage zero, stage one area in there is really, uh, the, there's got to be more to life than this, and you go out and you discover what that is. And you start reading books and attending classes and whatever, right? And you're in that sort of, mm, I'm not sure this stuff really works yet phase, but I'm going to read about it because I want to get away from where I am, and I will consider anything at this point to figure it out, right? And then you get to stage two, which is the proof and proselytizing phase, which is the, holy shit, this stuff really works. I must tell everyone I know and drag them to classes with me and hand them books that they have to read and, you know, go out and make new friends who believe this stuff too so that I don't think I'm crazy for believing it, right? That's what that phase is. And then there is the, the phase where we teach to learn, right? And it's that phase where you've learned enough that now you're like, okay, I'm going to teach some of what I've learned because in the process of teaching it, I'm going to understand it better. It's going to force me to study it more significantly. It's going to force me to be with it more. It's going to get people to ask me good questions that will make me research more. And, you know, it's that, that sort of phase. Now, if you're an introvert, you probably don't hit the teach to learn as strongly as extroverts. We extroverts, we're going to, like, teach a class or offer a webinar or, you know, do something, right? Um, introverts will probably have a friend over and teach them something quietly one-on-one, -on -one, right? But it's still there, right? You don't actually hit spiritual growth as a person until you hit stage four. And stage four is where you actually start to change who you are or your per more, more accurately, your perception of who you are. Because we as people are always who we are, but we have all of these coping mechanisms and neuroses and, you know, uh, belief structures and whatever, you know, roles that we play and identities that we've taken on to make other people happy and as compensation for what happened in our childhood and, you know, all this stuff that gets layered on top of who we are. So it's really not about changing who you are. It's about changing your perception of who you are. And it's about letting go of all the stuff that is hiding you from the world and from yourself. And so, you know, the transition from stage three to stage four is very difficult because you have to give up being right. And you've spent the first three stages going, I've got to find the right path. I've got to find the right way. I've got to, I've got to figure out how to do this more, more effectively, more whatever, right? You know, there's like this whole place where you're just like, I've got to figure out the right way. And at stage four, you have to say, I may not be right. I may not be right so significantly that I may not even be right about who I am and who I think I am which, you know, we think that we have the right to be right about. <laughs> and so, you know, in stage three, you learn about letting go of your stories. And you may even begin to work on letting go of some of these stories, right? 
But you don't really do the identity level story work until you hit stage four. Because stage four, you have to be willing to not be the person you were yesterday. Or not be the person you thought you were yesterday, more appropriately. Right? And so, you know, starting the spiritual growth process actually doesn't start until you hit stage four. So what what could be the transitioning point from stage three to stage four? How much is what you learn uh, it's relevant to decide when and how or whether you transit to stage four? Every transition from one stage to the next comes because there was a moment in time where you got absolute clarity that staying where you are is not okay. okay. Every single time. And so when you're going from your everyday life to there's got to be more to life than this, you crystallized your discontent, right? You got really clear that you were unhappy and you made a shift to change it, right? In the discovery to the proof and proselytizing phase, it's the, oh my God, this stuff really works. People are going to think I'm insane. I can't let people think I'm crazy, right? So it's like, okay, I, I can't have people thinking I'm crazy. I have to bring them all out so that they're crazy too. Right? And that's that crystallization point for that. And then it, it, going into stage three, the crystallization point is, okay, that's great. I'm, I've learned a lot of stuff, but what does it mean? And that's when you start to really, um, that's when people tend to try and put it into context and create a context for themselves. And that's where the, um, the, the classes come from. It's like, oh, I found a meaning for what it is that I've studied. I've found this understanding for what it is that I've studied. And I want to share that with you, right? And so that's, the, the, it's the putting it in context phase. It's looking for meaning behind all the random knowledge, right? Now, the, the sad part is that when you're in stage three, you still have a belief structure that says that somewhere I'm going to find the magic pill that makes me enlightened, right? And the, one of the biggest challenges of getting out of that stage three thinking, because there's so much information out there, so much, right? And you could study for your entire life and never read it all, because there's so many different disciplines and religions and practices and mysticisms. And you could read it until your eyes bled, and you would still never, never read it all because there's new stuff being written every day, right? And so you could stay in stage three your entire life, and I've seen people do it. I know a lot of people who have done it. And that's because they're still looking for the magic pill. They're still looking for that one piece of wisdom that's gonna take them to that place where they will wake up enlightened. And it's not about waking up enlightened. It's about waking up as yourself. And it, the more attached you are to who you are, the harder it is for you to wake up enlightened. <laughs> That's the hard part, right? Because you gotta give up your belief of who you are. And so, you know, for most people, you don't wake up enlightened. You gotta dig through all your crap and figure out what parts of you that you think are you are not really you, and da -da 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 -da, right? And just dig down, dig, dig, dig. I mean, crap, I've been doing this work hardcore, hardcore, for 16 years now, right? Four years ago, I got a really clear message from Spirit just be who you are. You want a confusing message from spirit? Think about it. I'm asking, what is it that I should be doing in the world? How should I be sharing my gifts with the world? And the only message I'm getting in return is just be who you are. Just be who you are. Just be who you are. Be who you are. Every place I went for two years, just be who you are. And I'm like, I'm not freaking Ama. No, isn't that funny? That was my response. Just be who you are. And I'm like, I'm not Ama. How those two relate, I don't know. 
<laughs> because it makes no sense, right? Be who you are, be, uh, but I'm, in my head, that meant be Ama. And uh, Ama, uh, Ama Chi, who is the hugging saint, right? Um, in my head, it meant being Ama. It's a, you know, because in my head, it translated to get paid for who you are. And I'm like, how am I supposed to get paid for just being cool? You know, um, people like to be around me. People like to hang with me. I don't feel like I could charge them for that. You know, <laughs> in my head, I was like going through all of that, going, oh, you know. Um, and you know, here it is, four years later, and I'm, fi I finally get it. <laughs> like a week ago, I got it. <laughs> four years later, I'm like, dang. And you know, if I look back over the last four years, I've had countless messages from countless people and, and countless situations that all showed me where I was. And if I look at my blog posts for the last four years, so many of them are in alignment with exactly where I am. And I couldn't see it because I had a belief structure in place an identity piece in place that was about being loyal to my father. And in order to be loyal to my father, I had to be grounded and I had to be taken seriously and I had to be in a real, real profession. And so I was a business coach. The business coach and shaman. Business coach and shaman, you know? And I had to walk through that. And I had to walk through a, a, one, my coach looking at me going, you need to just lead with the fact that you're a shaman. And then I had to have people look at me and go, what are you doing teaching business coaching? Anybody can teach this stuff, it's not who you are. You're good at it, don't get us wrong, but what the hell, <laughs> you know? And I had to sit with that and I had to let go of the business coaching piece. And then, you know, I'm like, okay, so now I'm just a shaman and a healer and what does that mean? No, but no one will take me seriously, right? And it's, it's still that loyalty to my father, loyalty to All my father. All this loyalty to my father is coming out. And I'm like, oh, I can't do that. What will my dad think? And I'm just like, you know what? I am 44 years old. At what point do I get to live my life and not have to be loyal to my dad in some other way, right? It's not like we don't have a relationship. We do. <laughs> so, you know, I had to let go of that identity piece that said, I, I'm just like my father. Because genetically, we have a really strong connection, right? And, and personality-wise, we have a lot of similarities. But I had to let go of that piece because that was his values, not mine. And so even after 16 years of working this, this hard, it took me four years to get to this point. And, and the universe is like, whack, whack, whack. <laughs> hit me over the head with this and I couldn't get it because I was too attached to the identity and so that's the piece about about spiritual growth is that you can't be so attached to the identity and and yet sometimes we are <laughs>